Greetings, everybody. Welcome to another Q&A meeting where we discuss the Buddhist practice of charity, morality, and meditation. Everyone is welcome to join this meeting and ask the questions. If this is your first time, please let me know where you come from. Please send in your question one at a time. Be precise and be brief as possible. And that's about it. We'll discuss this for about one hour. I shall start reading your comment and question. Tony Yi, Satu. Couple of man, how to let me see if I can increase the, the size of the letter. Okay, couple of man, pan, satu, kwan patum na pa, satu, bilim suki ho tu ajan, satu, satu, for all for your explanations. Bilim suki ho tu ajan satu satu for all your explanation. Terence T H D. Wish you well and happy Tanajan. Thanks for your Dhamma teaching. You're welcome. Bad Choi Chong, Satu Satu. Kenneth Hunt, good morning, Tanajan. You are all clear, thank you. Chin Charles, Satu Ajan Sujai. Prim and Y, greeting Rajan Ka. Greetings to you. Chung Pu NTR, greetings. Brahmsa, Namasagan Tanajan. Cindy Tan, Satu Satu. Question from Sibbe Groen in the Netherlands. Sibbe Groen, if I spell out your name incorrectly, please, please forgive me. I read in Sanya Veda, Vedaya Dita, Iroda, often translated as the cessation of perception and feeling. Everything ends. My question is, does, does this mean even all knowing has ended and one does not really know this state? Uh, is Or is there a non-dual knowing, the end of subject and object duality? The, no, the knowing remains, but the, the khanda, which are the perception and the feeling, stop function temporarily. It will return to action later when the, when the, the mindfulness that sent it into stop this action becomes weakened. When mindfulness weakens, then the mind will withdraw from this state of neuroda. Neuroda means the stop functioning of the Vedana and Sanya. Sanya is perception of memory. Vedana is, is feeling. But the one who knows doesn't cease to exist. It is the one who knows that the cessation of this thing happens. Without the one who knows, and who knows anything, right? So yes, the mind, or the one who knows, 
remain the same, remain knowing. We call this state of knowing pure knowing, knowing without any any interpretation, let's put it, by sanya, sankara, or vedana, or vinyana. So this is the temporarily working, temporarily ending or stopping functioning of the Namakandas. But the one who knows the mind is still there to, to know the cessation of the khandas. Since there is nothing to know, then there is no duality. But there is the one who knows, knows knowing the emptiness, knowing that everything has disappeared. Yohanna Lee, good afternoon, Namasagan Tanajan. Thank you. Adeline Chin, good afternoon, Tanajan. So happy to see you and hear from you again. Happy to see you too. Happy, happy for your presence. Question from Samanji, journalist from Sri Lanka. Question number one. Sri Lankans are undergoing a difficult period with constant strikes, protests, mob violence, fuel and essential commodity shortage, etc. The minds of the people are disturbed. What advice do you have to offer to these people? How can they maintain How can they maintain their mental balance? Please advise. You can you can say that it could be worse. Look at other country who is in bad, who is in worse shape than you are, such as Ukraine. People in Ukraine is much suffer more than people everywhere else. So if you can see things in a balanced manner you will see that maybe the problems that you are facing isn't all that bad. Yeah. And if you want to use wisdom, then you just have to see in the light of the three characteristics of existence. This is the way life is, anicca, changing from good to bad, from bad to good. Anatta is the work of nature, something that we cannot in intercept, interfere. So we just have to learn to live with it. Then there will be no suffering or dukkha. But if we want to change, we want it to go back to where it used to be when everything seems to be in abundance, then we can have a lot of dukkha or suffering because we cannot go back to that state. We have to live with the present situation. So, as a practitioner, we teach the mind to to remain calm, to remain in equanimity, and to accept things as they come. That that this doesn't mean that we don't do anything. We will try to do the best we can, hope for the best, but we have to expect the worst and then we will not feel so bad if we think of somebody else who is in worse shape than we are. There is somebody who is blind, who is handicapped, who is sick, for instance. Then if we can see things in a more balanced way, I, I can give you Chu Chin, good afternoon and my respect to Tanajan. Happy to see you again. I am from Malaysia. Thank you. 
พัสิชุมสาธุสาธุฮุยฮองโลกุดอัปนูนท่านอาจารย์ฮานิบอกส์บุรัตนูนอาจารย์ Why our mind at times can be so negative and strong resistance to do meditation even one knows it has to be practiced diligently is it okay thank you อาจารย์ It is what we call defilement or the hindrances. See, there are five hindrances or obstacles that the defilement will create to stop us from doing the meditation practice, and one of it is laziness. So we have to overcome this by pushing ourselves harder. Set up a schedule of practice, and then try to stay with that schedule. Stick to that schedule, regardless of the reason for not doing it. Once it's time for you to do your meditation practice, then you just go on and do it. If you don't, then you will never be able to succeed in your meditation practice. เราชกบุยสาธุสาธุสวัสดีสาธุสาธุ The Morning Star Good morning, p a r j a n Thank you very much for your teaching. Is it sinful or bad karma to go on s o m e vegetable and raise hen to lay eggs? I have serious health problems which result from unsuitable food and contamination of toxin from food chain. I need to cook food for myself in order to prevent disease to flare up or worsen. I do not cook for fun, but because at this moment I cannot find someone else to rely upon. Organic veggies are expensive. I can ask someone to help grow organic veggie for me. But I am afraid to kill small animals underneath the soil. If if I took eggs from hen that I raised, will I break first precept? Does it consider stealing eggs from hens? I won't. I don't think so, because the hen belongs to you. You feed you feed the hen. And the hen doesn't eat the the eggs anyway. But the only problem is, can this egg becomes can be hatched and become a chicken or not? If it can, then you are considered killing. So you have to make sure somehow that the egg cannot hatch, cannot become a a chicken. So if you're not sure, maybe it's better to buy, to buy eggs. But I don't know. You have so many, so many, so many requirements in your life. This will make it difficult for you to live. The Buddha said, try to live simple, and take things as they come. But if you want to make it difficult for you, that's your problem. Question number two from Samanji, Sri Lanka. In society, we come across different types of people. From envy to hatred, we become victims of other people's uncontrolled emotion. What is the best way to handle such people? Like the way you handle nature, I guess. Like the way you handle the weather. You cannot change the the changing nature. Of the weather, sometimes it can be hot, sometimes it can be cold, sometimes it can be wet, sometimes it can be dry. We learn to live with these things. So it's the same way with people. According to Buddhism, people are work of nature, like the weather. 
So we just have to learn to take them as they come. Don't try to change them. Try to adapt to them. Adjust yourself so that you don't re, re, uh, react in, a, in an emotional way. Just merely know them for what they are. Bruce Lee, Alam, Alam Sia, Namasagana Jan, very nice to see you again, thank you. Enilam, Satu, Patarapon, Bosuk, Satu, Kenatan Kiba, greeting Ajan, may you be well and happy. Lavan Huang, hello Jan, I am from California. Everything has been expensive recently, which making life harder, even though I am working full time. There is also a lot of violence, such as gun violence and racial discrimination. I feel disheartened and distressed. I'm not sure what to do. Get out of that country if you can. Go somewhere else, go live somewhere else. I, I, I live in the States for five years and I decided I didn't want to stay there anymore. And I never went back since I came from the States. I left the States in 1972. It's 50 years now, I think, yes. And never have one moment of thoughts of returning to the States whatsoever. So no one forced you to live there. It's your desire for comfort, physical, com physical comfort, and it causes you to remain there. If you can live with less comfort, then you can find some other place to live. You don't have to live in the U.S. Question number three from Samanji. The four stages of awakening. Asotapana, Sakadagami, Anagami, and Arahan. Could you elaborate on each state, stage and its achievement? See, these four stages of awakening requires that you have to get rid of the ten fetters. See, Asotapana can get rid of the first three fetters of sak Sakaya Nitti. Silapata Parama Palamasa and Vichitgicha or Tao in the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha. The Sakadagami can lessen two more fetters but not completely eliminate them yet, which are Raka, sexual desire, and Duk, and I can't think of the Pali word, but feeling of unsatisfaction, patika, patika, and raka. The second stage can lessen these two fetters. While the third stage of enlightenment, anagami can completely eliminate the two, the two raka and patika. The fourth stage of awakening requires that you remove the remaining five fetters of rupa raka, arupa raka, attachment or enjoyment in the rupa jhana and arupa jhana, and restlessness from, from practice too hard, from too much contemplation until the mind started to become restless and agitated and self, getting rid of the self on. Uh, and the last one is the completely, truly see the Four Noble Truths in every instance. These are the, the ten fetters required for anyone to become enlightened. So if you want to study further, just search for the ten fetters, the ten Buddhist fetters. 
you need the practice of morality, meditation, or samadhi, and the practice of vipassana or wisdom to be able to remove the ten fetters from the mind. Lucy Dana Jitta Sasong Satu Satu Ong Eng Eng Satu Satu Yap To Yap Namaste Ajahn I have seen people who are mediums of Deva can never enter the human body and affect the person's mind. No, each, each mind cannot be entered by another mind. Each person has a mind already. Each body already has a mind. And no one can possess the, the human body of another human. Everybody have their own the human body and no one can, can take possession of the other people's body. One Vimon Namasagan Anumotana Satu Chik Seng Tan Satu Satu Kunami Tan Good Day Bhante Anna Goldman, good afternoon, Tanajana from California. I wish you well and happy. Thanks for your explain about Dhamma. Satu, Satu, you're welcome. Question number four from Samanji. Does one have to become an arahant to be free from desire, sexual desire in particular? No, you have to be an anagami to be totally free from sexual desire. And the cause for this to happen is the perception of a sukha, or unpleasant part of the body. If you can see the body being unpleasant, like being a corpse all the time, then your sexual desire will disappear from your mind. Sotapanna and Sakadagami still have the, the sexual desire. The Sakadagami has less than the Sotapanna. And Anagami and the Arahan both have no sexual desire left in the mind. Pasana Hachunasevi, good morning. With Venerable Pajan, I've just come back from the dawn. I learned more about the tech, like and dislike. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Claudia Srina, good morning from Germany. Tanajan Suchat, meanwhile I am one. Meanwhile I am on the final spur to do the precision work of my translation of your precious book. Our disabled foster son left our family and moved to a place for adult people with special need. Now I have now I have so much more time for meditation. We have school vacation now in Germany and I got the key to a very small Buddhist center in the town. where I live. This means that when I have the need to retreat in silence, I can go there. Thank you for your teaching. You're welcome. Koe Lin Shiang, Satu Satu. James Song, greeting Ajahn. Greetings to you. Adi Aha Satu. Sona Day, dear Tanajan, my father, wishes to practice Dhamma by being reborn as a Deva because he thinks that human life is too bothersome. How likely or, or, or tough is it for a Deva to practice and actually achieve at least Sotapanna Nibbana in his realm, which is filled with multitudes of pleasure. Also, can Deva practice the Sutra? It's not likely that a deva will be able to practice Dhamma unless they have a teacher like the Buddha or, or, or a noble disciple like an Arahan to guide them. If there's no teacher, they will not be
be able to practice on their own, except if they have already become a sotapanna. If they have become a sotapanna and they happen to be born in the Deva realm, the sotapanna can continue on practicing by, by itself until it reaches the final enlightenment. So it's better to be born in a human realm where there is the teaching of the Buddha. But if there is no teaching of the Buddha, then it will be very difficult to practice to, to attain to Nibbana. You will need to wait until a new Buddha or, or an Arahant to be able to teach you, to teach you and guide you toward enlightenment. And so besides, you cannot always tell that when you die, you will become a deva, because you don't know how much good or bad karma you have done so far. So to be saved, it's better to practice now if you're a human being, and there is the teaching of the Buddha around. Because in your next cycle, when you return as a human, there might not be any Dhamma teaching left in the world, or anybody to guide or teach you. So you should consider a human birth more precious than any any birth as far as the practice for enlightenment is concerned. You are lucky to be born a human when there is still the teaching of the Buddha around. So take up take take up this advantage or this benefit, this opportunity right now. Don't procrastinate because this is just a form of delusion. Practice now. This is the best time to learn, to study, to practice, and to become enlightened. No other time is much, is better than now, because there, there are teachers around, and you can do your practice, regardless of your physical conditions. Even a sick person can become enlightened if there's a good teacher guiding him or her. Just like the father of the Buddha, when he was sick in bed and, and will die in seven days' time, the Buddha guided him to become enlightened. Alexander Aruja, Aruga, Hello Ajahn, thanks to your alert and the help of your team and that of the employees and the owner of Siam Resort Padilla. Yesterday I won my third passport, Brazil, Holland and now the Thai passport. The next obstacle is the long line leading to the parking lot at Chifo Amsterdam's airport. I will arrive at the airport 10 hours before the scheduled departure. Such is my desire to reach beyond the clouds. Satu, Satu. See you soon, Alex Alexander. Hope you have a pleasant flight. Tony Yip, dear Tanajan, good afternoon. May you be well and healthy. I have a question. Can a monk be known a person? Karma being raised up or karma have come to him or her. Thank you, Tanajan. Can a monk know a person's karma? Well, everything that happened to a person, some of them can be caused by the by the past karma, and some can be caused by the changing nature of things that we in the world that we live in. So there are two causes, really, natural causes, the changing nature of the, of the world we live in, and the consequence of our past karma. It isn't that important to know. It's, it, what's important is to know how to deal with them. And the, the way to deal with them is, is to take things in stride, take things as they come with equanimity, then you'll be okay, you'll be safe. Don't try to push or try to run away from the situation that you happen to be in. Try to face it with equanimity. 
If you don't have equanimity, keep reciting Bhutto Bhutto. Jobu Devaram no Asuka, no grave no dead body. The dead is there, melted and vanished. Sunny Lim, good afternoon, Ajahn. Thanks so much. Ali Hassan, good day, Tanajan. Audio and video clear. Thank you. Question number five from, from Samanji. Is watching pornography a sin or violation of precepts? Pornography just stimulates sexual desire and which might cause the person to break the precept by practicing breaking the third precepts. But if watching pornography and then doesn't cause the person to break the precept, then there's nothing wrong with that, except that it keeps the person fi fixated with, with sexual desire, which can be harmful to the mind. It can cause dukkha when a person cannot uh, release, relieve the sexual desire. So watching pornography is not recommended for people who want to keep the precepts. It is unlikely that the Buddha ever mentioned about this because electronic or digital folded medias were unavailable during the era of the Buddha. As Buddha at least discussed the mentality behind people who tend to gain satisfaction through watching other people's sexual behavior. No, but the Buddha knows this thing is 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 the cause of sexual desire to to watch sexual activities of other people that's why the buddha said that we should restrain from watching anything that will can stir up any type of desire at all even looking at food can become a problem because it can cause you to have hunger and it might cause you not to be able to keep the eight precepts. So yes, the Buddha knew these things, and the, the Buddha recommended that we restrain our our sensual sensual organs, our eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and body. Don't try to expose them to sensual objects because they can cause the the mind to come become aroused with with different types of desire. Anaha, satu satu. Jobu, practice in human realm, not in devil realm. Okay. Ninety nine percent cannot become human and deva. Pramsa, dear Pajan, I am feeling hate. Some colleague who negative attitude and always make bad behavior to others, and she is always think that she is a perfect person. I try to take Ubeka when work with her many times. And since she always try to continue to censure everyone and make everyone feel annoyed, I am sometimes fighting with her based on my role and responsibility. This means I still not have sati enough, right? Yes, you don't have enough equanimity to leave her alone. Or if you have to deal with her, you should deal with rationality, not with emotion. Kirian Dong. Hi, Alexander. Do you mean Thai visa? Sorry, I don't know the background, but how can you get a Thai passport? Rusli Alam Saya. Such a great fortune to be born as human at the time of Buddha's teaching exists the great teacher in front of our, of our eyes at the very moment. And yet there are very, very few who realize this. And also, Neya uh, Pukala, trainable humankind. In the hard way. Thank you very much, Ajahn. You're welcome.
Elvinli, good afternoon, Tanjan. Thanks very much for your Dharma teaching. Satu, Satu. Handybox, Ajahn, is it possible to learn? Live in seclusion like a monk by himself, but be guided by good teacher like Anakajan. Is that possible to attain Nibbana? Yes, if you can find yourself a place to live and practice alone. Because nowadays you can study from books and also from online teaching. Anytime you have any question, you can always wait for a meeting like this and send in your question, then you will be able to get the answer you would like to know. But in order to really advance and really really become enlightened, you need some form of hardship environment. If you live in a comfortable and safe place, you will not be your mind will not be able to to get rid of your defilement because the defilement will be hiding behind this comfort zone. So you have to leave the comfort zone if you want to bring, to to get to pull out the, the the defilement that's been hiding behind this comfort zone. So you have to live in a way in a surrounding that can cause you fear, cause you uh, loneliness for instance. But if you live in a comfort zone, then your defilement can be hiding behind it. And you not even know that they exist. So you might have to go live with a teacher in a monastery somewhere. An enlightened teacher will have a good environment for you to do the practice. Would leaving behind loved ones to attain his own enlightenment be considered selfish and unfilial? Son, grateful to Ajahn. No, it's like going to study. You, when you go to a university abroad, you have to leave your family to go study for four years or, or as many years you need to get graduate, to be graduated. So going to practice uh, living alone or with a, a good teacher is like going to a uni university abroad. When you have become enlightened, you can always come back and look after your, your parents. Like the Buddha, after he became enlightened, he went back and visited the palace to, to, to see his father and his relatives. And he taught them the, the, the teaching until most of them become enlightened. Anura Kamalat, good afternoon, Tanajan. Hope you are well. Very good to see you. What is a good, skillful way to overcome distress, anger in day to day working environment? Thank you. Not to expecting too much, not to expect too much of anything. Just take things as they come. If you expect and when you cannot get what you expect, then you become stressful and angry. But if you take things as they come, well, be, be thankful for whatever you get, large or small, good or bad. Just, just wait and see, and let things happen. Do your best, expect the worst. Then you won't feel any stress or anger with your working environment. Om Re, Satu Satu. Ayi Namaskar Tanajan, Satu Satu. Ayi Tanajan, a person actually has the possibility of attaining sainthood in this life if he trains himself and is guided by a right teacher and stays in the monastery. But because of his attachment to his family, he delays staying in the monastery. 
My question is one will that person lose time to attain holiness in this life? Yes. Every time you're not practicing, you are losing precious time. Two, is it possible for the person to attain holiness if he remains as a lay person? Possible, but probably harder than to be living in a, a conducive environment and having being near a good teacher. Karina Kaur, good afternoon, Ajahn Satu Satu. Question number six from Samanji. Many people in Sri Lanka are uncertain about their future. Given the bad financial crisis in the country, how should one get ready to face a bad crisis like this? By contemplating on death a lot. Eventually, we're all gonna die. So it doesn't really matter what happens in this world whether it's good or bad, eventually everybody will lose everything anyway. We all will have to die sooner or later, one day. So, you know, this is something that we keep forgetting, that we will all die, that we will all lose everything that we have. So if you're constantly contemplating on that, then you will not feel bad or sad about the present situation. And you, you will try to work work as best as you can with it, take things as they come. But eventually, you know that we're all going to end up dead anyway. So death contemplation can be helpful to remind us of the true situation of our life. We are all subjected to aging, sickness, and death. This is considered to be natural and no one can avoid this thing. What are Buddha's advice on house management, money, monetary management during difficult times? Try to be, try to economize your, your expenses. Try to reduce your expenses. Spend only on the essential. And give up the non-essential. Then you will have less expense expense and then you can then will have no money monetary problem. Your handily Tanajan, what is the good karma we did in the past to be able to know you and benefit from your teaching in this lifetime? I don't know. It doesn't matter. What you should know now is what you should do with your opportunity right now. Ong Bi Hun Satu Satu JJ Tan, is it okay to meditate by chanting? May I be well and happy, as I am still not able to meditate without chanting something. Yes, you can chant. Maybe you can chant the, the Buddha's quality, if, if you know the Pali. Iti piso pakawa alaham samma sambhuto vicha jarana sampano sukato loka vitu. Just keep chanting these words and your mind will become calm, peaceful, and happy. Kwang Ming Su, Satu Satu. Alexander, Aruja, Aruka. To enter Thailand, you have to make so-called Thai passport. It is not the Thai nationality. And this is a passport for COVID, for the health. This is a health passport, which all foreigner has to register. Uh, and acquired at the at the embassy or consulate of that country. Anura Gamalat, thank you for your Dharma teaching and meditation guidance. You're welcome. Ui Pohua Satu Satu. Terence T. H. Lee, Haitanajan. Can a person who suffers from depression or anxiety disorder be able to maintain mindfulness and practice the Dharma well? Thanks. The cause of the depression and anxiety is really the lack of mindfulness. So it will be really difficult for them to maintain mindfulness since they already have lost their mindfulness. 
So what they have to do is really try real hard to re-establish their mindfulness, try to bring back their mindfulness. So they have to work hard in in. Question from Saurabh, <coughs> Saurabh Ingoli, a dental surgeon from India. Question number one, what is the difference between stream entry and attaining Maha Mudra, emptiness related to Om Mani Padam Hum? I have understood both of them intellectually and I feel that both are true. I'm not sure what you you're referring to. The second thing, emptiness related to Om Mani. I think this emptiness you realize from Samadhi, uh, mindfulness, meditation, or we call it Jhana. Jhana is different from being a, a Sotapanna. A Sotapanna has attained to this level by being and not seeing the law of karma and also see the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha. So these are two different. With the with Samadhi all you need is just to focus on and between the two states. Helen Yip Hayajan, did the Buddha's father attain Nibbana too? Definitely, seven days before he passed away on, on, on his deathbed. On, he was sick and so the Buddha was there nearby to guide him to, in, to into Nibbana. Sarab Ingo, question number two. Is a person who has attained Mahamuddha free from rebirth in lower realm just as stream entera is free from global rebirth. No, both of them still have to, uh, I'm sorry. One is free temporarily, the other one is free permanently. A sotapanna is free from lower realm of rebirth permanently. Why uh, someone who have attained jhana can still be reborn in a, in a lower realm if they continue to do bad karma? when they are born as human again. Jogu, temporarily cessation, still consciousness exists, like jhana and ultimate cessation, no more consciousness and no more mind. So when no more mind, no more condition can function. So Nibbana is the unborn unconditioned. When a vicha does not exist, no more suffering exists. Nibbana has nothing connected to this existence. It is unborn and nothing con connected to bliss, happiness. It is unconditioned. No feeling, no perception, no formation. It is unborn. Bhutam Saranam Gachami. Chayamit Yamada Satu Satu. Kemetua, Satu, Satu. Okay. We have 10 more minutes left. So if you're typing your question right now, you can continue on typing and send them in. 
We still have about 10 minutes to discuss and answer your question. In the meantime, I'd like to take a brief break, taking a drink. C.G. Lim, good afternoon, Tanajan. Thank you so much for your Dhamma teaching. Much gratitude, wishing Ajahn good health, comfort, and much happiness. You're welcome. Tan Mui Ki, Satu Satu. So another day, dear Jan, how to use Kesa as object for body contemplation by repeating the word in mind. Yes, you can use the word Kesa, Kesa, like you use the word Buddha, Buddha. The goal is to stop you from thinking. Kesa, 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 la Buto, Buto, Buto. It depends on your preference. Some people like some other words. Some people like ati, ati, which means bones or skeleton. Bones, bone, bone, ati, ati, gesa, gesa, loma, loma. This can be used as a meditation object. Enilam satu satu. Sonade, thank you so much, Tanajan. Anura Gamala. Dear Tanajan, does someone's karma affect only the mind in next life and their impact to the body? The body are considered to be collateral damage. The, the main object of, of, of the karma effect is in the mind. The mind becomes miserable, become painful, and etc. But the body can also be, be a collateral, uh, collateral damage because the mind and the body happens to be together. Like someone commit a crime, then they will put, the body will be, be put in prison. But the one who really face the consequence of the, the, of the bad karma is the mind. The mind will, will be locked up in the prison with the body. 
Bruce Lee, Alam Saya. Dear John, thank you very much for today's session and please have a good rest. Thank you, you're welcome. Well, we still have about four more minutes left. Today I'm using a different computer. So you might see me uh, be doing something a little bit different because the, the, the mouse I use is on my left hand, left side, and I'm using my right hand to few dreams in life. How do we live in life without regrets? By doing the best you can right now. Do everything that you can, as best as you can. Don't wait until it's time, it's too late to do it. Uh, practice the three, doing the three things the Buddha tell us to do. That is to avoid doing any bad karma. Do only good karma and purify the mind. If we can do these three things, then we will never have any regrets in life when we die. Aye, I'm sorry, Tanajan, my signal is poor. Thank you, Tanajan. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, it looks like there are no more questions and no more comment coming in. So it's almost time for me to end this session now. It's almost one hour, 58 minutes and a half. So I would like to say thank you for your participation. I hope this meeting is of some use, some benefit to you and help you. If all goes well, I'll see you again at the same time next week. Thank you and goodbye.